Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about absorption in the small intestine. Uh, so first thing I want to discuss is the difference between villi and microvilli. Uh, in both cases, they're finger-like projections, but they're very different in size and uh, what they're made of. Uh, so villi would be plural, a villus is singular. Uh, those are finger-like projections of the mucosa, so of the whole tissue. So if we look in our picture here on the left, that is a villus. So that is a projection of the whole tissue that is pushing out in that finger-like shape. So it's made of many cells. So if we look at this villus, those are all little teeny cells all on the outside of that villus making up the whole thing. And then we see that there are blood and lymphatic capillaries that are inside of that villus. Okay, so a villus is larger. It's a projection of a tissue rather than a projection of a cell. Um, so it increases the surface area of the intestinal epithelium. So we have villi in different places in the body, uh, but very importantly in the small intestine, the mucosa in the small intestine is all, has villi all throughout. And its purpose is to significantly increase the surface area. More surface area will mean more contact between the chyme, the, the contents of the small intestine, and the cells where the nutrients will be absorbed. Okay, so villi significantly increase surface area, which will significantly increase the amount of absorption. Microvilli are tiny little projections of a plasma membrane of an individual cell. And they're so small that even when we look in a microscope, you won't see the defined microvilli. What you'll see is a fuzzy line. So if you look at a cell in a microscope and it looks has a fuzzy outline, that fuzziness is because there are microvilli there that are sort of blurring the edges of that cell. Uh, so they're tiny projections of the plasma membrane. So they're similar. They're both these sort of finger-like projections. They're similar in shape. But on the left side in our picture, we're looking at a projection of the whole tissue in the wall of the small intestine. And then if we zoom in on those individual teeny little cells, then what we see are absorptive cells that also have these little microvilli that are projecting off of them. So the microvilli are teeny tiny and the villi are much larger. Okay, so the microvilli serve to increase the surface area of each cell the villi increase the surface area of the entire tissue. Then also in the small intestine, there are circular folds. Um, so in the wall of the small intestine, you can see in this picture here, there are these folds that go in circles, sort of rings around the lumen of the small intestine. And it causes the contents that are moving through the small intestine to sort of spiral as they move along. Uh, so they're permanent ridges of the mucosa and the submucosa. Um, and again, their purpose, everything here, the purpose is to enhance absorption by increasing the surface area. And it causes the chyme to spiral rather than just pushing forward in a straight line. So imagine if it was smooth and the chyme pushed forward just in a straight line, then whatever's on the outside would be what gets absorbed. It's, that would be what has contact with the intestinal wall. And whatever is sort of in the center of the lumen and in the center of the chyme that's moving through wouldn't make contact and we wouldn't absorb that if it was just pushing forward. But instead we have these circular folds that cause the chyme to spiral. And so we're sort of mixing um, the content so that all of the contents have a chance to make contact with the intestinal wall. So we increase absorption that way. So when the actual absorption is taking place, um, so small molecules move through the absorptive epithelial cells of the mucosa. Okay, so we're breaking down the food that we're eating in the stomach and then in the small intestine, both by mechanical and chemical digestion. And when those molecules are small enough, then they're ready for absorption. Um, so that absorption happens when those molecules are teeny tiny enough, they can be taken up into the little individual absorptive cells that are making up that whole uh, wall of the villus. 
Okay, so like we see in our picture here where we're zoomed in, we see the cells and the microvilli on those cells. So we have these little food molecules, little nutrients that are now small enough to be absorbed and enter into the cell that make up the wall of the small intestine. So they enter into that cell and pass through to the other side of the cell. So it's like the absorptive cell is the gatekeeper. It's what separates the contents inside the small intestine from the um, capillary, the, um, sorry, the blood and lymphatic capillaries that lie right on the other side. Okay, so we have these little cells that are the gatekeepers and then we have contents inside of the small intestine. So those contents will pass into those cells and through to the other side where there are blood and lymphatic capillaries waiting for them on the other side. So those nutrients will be taken up into the blood or lymphatic capillaries and then go off into circulation. So uh, blood is a water-based environment. So water soluble things get taken up into the blood capillaries. The lymphatic capillaries have a fattier environment because there are these, um, they're called uh, cholecystomicrons. Uh, there are these little fatty compounds that stay inside of the lymphatic system, which causes the lymph to be naturally more um, fat friendly. More So the more fat soluble things will be taken up into the lymphatic capillaries. So it's still very watery inside the lymphatic system because it's the same fluid uh, that came from the blood and became interstitial fluid and got taken up into the lymphatic system. But it's more fat friendly, I suppose we could say, because of those little um, cholemicrons, cholecystomicrons? No, I'm mixing that up with a hormone, cholemicrons, uh, that stay inside of the lymph to make it a more fatty environment. So like fats and fat soluble, uh, vitamins will be taken up into the lymph, whereas water-soluble vitamins, um, proteins, other things like that will be taken up into the blood and go into circulation. Uh, so about 90% of our absorption and digestion happens in the small intestine, and the remaining 10% would be in the stomach or large intestine, so much, much less. Uh, the very majority of our absorption is in the small intestine. Okay, well, thank you for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.